is a continuation of geostatistical analysis. In the previous tutorials, you learned how to use interpolation, in particular reverse distance weighting, to interpolate data from data, and also learn different uh, options available to explore data. In this tutorial, we will use Kriging to, in, to perform interpolation and then compare it with the other method that we used. So if you go to uh, Geostatistical Wizard, you will see that um, in the Geostatistical methods, there is Kriging and Co-Kriging. We'll select Kriging and then make sure you have the correct source and correct variable selected. Uh, in case of co-kriging, we can have more data sets, but since we are just performing uh, on a single layer, it will be just kriging. Go to next, and you will see there are several types of kriging. Uh, we will just do ordinary kriging, um, and we won't do any transfer type, and we'll leave the simplest default values for these options. Go to next, you'll see that it will show the biogram or the semi in this case, the data which we saw in the last tutorial, and you see that the, 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 the variation is um, it, as the distance increases, the variation or the covariance uh, uh, of the data increases, which kind of makes sense. But there is a lot of variability of in the semi-variogram. Even then, we can see that there is a there's a there is a trend where the uh, semi-variogram has very small value at the points within the w that are close to each other and as their distance increases then their variation also increases and um, again here uh, we can select the covariance or semi-variogram uh, values we'll just leave again as default um, values here and go to the next and here you will see that it will perform the interpolation and show you what the data will look like. And we can again select various uh, uh, options here. How many, for example, how many neighbors to consider, or how many minimum neighbors to consider uh, in performing the interpolation. Uh, what neighborhood types are we using? Should we smooth neighborhood before we use the data, or just uh, standard? So again, we'll keep the uh, the default value and go to the next. And just like it showed in the inverse uh, distance weighting uh, it shows you the model that uh, it has fit into the data and also shows you the measured and predicted values and if we compare the error in this case you will see that um, again there are uh, different uh, values of errors and depending upon uh, where that point is and how many points were considered in uh, performing the interpolation, some points have higher errors, whereas there are other points that have very small errors, and that's that's a trade-off that uh, we have to go through, anyways. So uh, you can also look at the plot of the error, the plot of the standard deviation, and how um, uh, what kind of uh, distribution does it have in terms of the normal distribution, and click finish to compute you will again see the summary of all the uh, parameters that were used for Kriging and if you click OK you will see that a map has been created. Now if you compare this with the inverse distance weighting or IDW map you will see that the two methods are giving different results and again is there a right or wrong method? There are uh, different ways to look at it. The deterministic methods only use the values at these points and compute uh, based upon some deterministic approach whereas the uh, statistical method which is uh, Kriging, it uses the statistical information in, case, in this case the semi-variogram of the data to compute the uh, interpolation. So it does represent the spatial process uh, more than a uh, deterministic method. But again, um, it comes down to uh, what kind of data you have. If the data has a good representation of reality, then you will get a good statistical fit. 
Um, and again, sampling density plays an important role too. So I hope this gives you uh, an idea of how we can use interpolation uh, from the geostatistical analyst to create maps from point-based measurements. Now, once you have created this map, you can always save it. For example, uh, I will show it for Krigging, but it applies to all. You can go to data, and you can save it as raster data or vector data. You can see that there are uh, clear uh, polygon type shapes. Uh, we will create raster data out of this and uh, just like you have learned before you can provide the information about how big the cell size uh, uh, should be and um, so you c we can create a, a 30 meter cell size which we have uh, done before for DEM data sets and provide um, the location where the data should be saved in this case it's uh, lab 10 and this is Krigging interpolation that's probably too long of a name so we need to reduce the name Krigging or Krig interp okay, and um, click OK to save it and this is how you can um, save the data